All right, welcome to How to Be a DM. I'm Shelly Mazenoble, and I am still way too scared to try to be a dungeon master. You got to change but, that. <laughs> but my guess here isn't. <laughs> I am talking to one of my favorite Wizards co-workers, Trick Jarrett, who is senior content strategist, which is maybe the most unintuitive title <laughs> I've ever heard. What is it you do here, Trick? Uh, I am focused on helping define and scope and shape this con the content strategy. Uh, yeah. You know, working with the different stakeholders, the different brands, uh, Magic and D&D, &D and the different parts of both brands to figure out content that accomplishes their needs, that uh, um, is stuff our fans want to watch, all that sort of stuff. Like, like this segment, perhaps. Like this segment, that's right. Okay, well, hopefully they give us an, a good thumbnail, unlike, you know, some of those <laughs> other ones I've seen out there. Um, but I'm excited to talk to you because I've heard about your um, campaign for a while now, and I know that you uh, you you do homebrew, is that? Mm, yeah. So you, you, you have been building your own world for how long now? Well, I've, I've, I've been a world builder and fan of that for years. I actually, uh, my high school senior year, I had two free periods. Uh, I think it was the last half of the year. I had two free periods and was given a self-study project and I made a, a world. Uh, so basically for five days a week, I had two hours of school, literal school time that I was able to do world building. And that's not even the world that I'm playing D&D &D in. That's, that's stuff from, you know, back in the day when I was a kid. Um, that's incredible. I, I've been working on this world as an idea for probably two years as a concept. It really started to come into its own, I would guess, October of 2019 of me sort of like, okay, I understand. I understand what this world is now. Uh, and then I've been running an active D&D &D game almost every week, uh, actually since January last year. When we just crossed the one year mark. In this world? Mm-hmm. So what was it like? So this world lived in your head for a long time, and then you actually got to see people experiencing your world. I imagine that's probably like seeing somebody in the wild reading a book that you wrote. Yeah. Like, wh uh, what, was, what I did was I actually put together a primer on the world for the players because it, it has oh, cool. stuff that is relevant and recognizable to D, D as normal you know there's a lot of the same races but there's also twists on each of them i have different sub races and stuff like that for elves and dwarves and um i also put the disclaimer in here is like not everything in this document may, like it, it, the document was like here's what you your character would know of the world but i also put the disclaimer for the player of not everything in this document may be true like okay. I, I want them to be there are things in the world that are common knowledge and common belief but are not necessarily the actual facts, um, which is an actually incredibly important feature of the world because of how the magic and cosmology of it all works. Uh, is knowledge and truth is a, a core f facet and feature that's being explored in it. Oh, okay. That's cool. I was going to ask if that is part of the world or just your way of saying, I made this up. Give me, cut me some slack here, guys. A little bit of column A, a little <laughs> of column B, um, primarily for the, the narrative purposes, but uh, also some leeway for myself to say I might end up changing things as we go along. As you should. Yeah. Uh, so I, I like the concept of world building, but mostly because if I screw up some rules, which I inevitably will, which is really one of the biggest deterrents for me in dungeon mastering. But if I mess things up, I can just be like, nope, that's how it works in my world. Like, I yep. just feel like I'd have more freedom. But I think a really big drawback would be that you don't have a, a book that's already published and printed and that you can go back and reference if you forget something or if, you know, like, I mean, it's already tracked in, in, in a nice bound publication for you. When you're building your own world, that onus is on you. Right. So that's what I want to talk about is how the heck do you keep all of this stuff straight and clear and organized? Uh, well, when I first started and actually when the campaign started, I had a 40 page Google Doc okay. that was just a compilation of every single thing that I knew I wanted to talk about in this world or I, things I needed to write down. 
the different regions, who they are, what they are about. And, and a lot of it was nothing more than a couple of sentences or even just bullet points. Like for a lot of the world, I, I, I fully fleshed out or, or strongly fleshed out the starting location of the players. I was okay. I know that they're going to start in this place. This is where I want the adventure to start. And they're going to take a journey from this small town to the major metropolis. And so I defined that continent really well. And then I took the rest of the map that I had drawn, and I literally would just write three facts about these other continents, such that I could call upon them as rumors that people might hear or, or use them as potential plot hooks when I'm in need of something that I just need to grab and, and dangle out there that we might come back to later. Uh, and so that document was really my main source. But as I said, it was a long document, and it was actually unwieldy to use and hard to easily access. And so I, I started looking for other tools and um, I'm fairly tech savvy. I like web, I, I did web development for several years. I, I'm, I'm capable in that area. And so I was exploring, you know, making my own thing, using a, a wiki solution. And I actually came across a tool called Notion, um, which is a, a knowledge management tool. It's like a wiki, but it's actually got a lot of features. It's designed for teams and corporate companies to use for collaboration. It's used, um, it, it can, you know, stand in for your own website if you want to use it in that way. Um, and it's great. It's got a free, free user level. This is, I'm, I'm not officially involved in the company in any way, obviously. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, not a sponsored episode. This is not a sponsored segment, but <laughs> it, Notion has really enabled me to run the game that we're talking about because uh, of one key feature that is incredibly useful for me which is um, databases. And the database in here is essentially like a Excel documents. You put a bunch of information in, but they give you the ability to have different views. So like if, if you're, for example, I have, I have a database of all of the NPCs that I've created in this world, whether the players know them or not. And I can have this searchable thing and I can actually change the view. And if I have art associated with the characters, there's a portrait view, there's a, there's a gallery view. Oh my God. And the step that goes further than that, and it's kind of hard to just talk about and not show, but the database view also lets me pull essentially subsections of that database for different views. So like I can go to the page of one of the continents and I can embed a part of the database that says, okay, I want all of the NPCs who I've marked as being on this continent. And it automatically updates and keeps that all straight for me such that I only have to make a change in one location and everywhere else is updated about where is this NPC currently located? Things like Wait, that. Wait, no. Yes. So the, I mean, like, because they're going to move around, and mm -hmm. it, so you can you track them this way. So in case you were like, oh, let's have them talk to Old Man Wilbur from the the the, the inn, but then a year ago, Old Man Wilbur went to go visit his daughter in some other continent. You can. Right. If I, if, I, if I decide that an NPC has changed locations, then I change it in the database. Oh, my God. And, and I mean, I don't do this largely outside of planning for sessions. There's not there's not a, a there's not a you know, I don't spend hours a day just simulating the world in my mind outside mm, I feel of like planning I for my next D&D. &D. Well, and that's fine. That's great. <laughs> but I just like, wanted to manage expectations around what I do. Uh, I've also used the tool. I don't use it as much right now because they aren't in a segment that says NPC heavy. But I also, like when I do session notes, when I'm playing D&D, &D, when I'm doing my prep, I can tag NPCs that I think they're likely to run into or I'm planning for them to run into. And then I can embed a view of the, the character database that is, here are all of the characters that I need at a glance of information they're going to need or things like that. So you just keep this up and running while mm -hmm. you're DMing. Yeah, I, I cannot run. I cannot run this game and maintain the story and world without the access to my Notion database. Um, and it's not just for NPCs. I also actually just over the holiday migrated all of my geographic data. Like I said, I have continents, I have yeah. you know, mountain ranges, I have all, cities. Moved all of that into a similar database so that I can have similar views and have a, a centralized management system for tracking that geographic data. Um, and again, this is super hardcore. This is this is way above and beyond that you what you need to do for running your own homebrew world. But I love world building. I love knowing that this world exists in my mind and having this information to reference. Well, I know that a lot of, of our dungeon masters love 
world building too. And I think a, a lot, this is a good tool for, for a newer dungeon master because like, like you're saying, like you can do a lot of prep before you even have a group together yeah, to run totally. a game. So this might be a good way for them to just use it to start building that Absolutely. world. Uh, and one of the things that I would also suggest is have the idea for your world, but accept that by putting players in this world, you don't get to own the world whole, wholly anymore. Like if they're going to go and blow up a castle, you don't get to, you know, I mean, you can say in terms of the, the records or whatever that sure the castle exists, but uh, have that acceptance and willingness. And also well, let, like, it's fun to let my character, my players create NPCs and tell me who they're going to talk to or who they're going to run into. Or I tell them a name and then they tell me what this character looks like, things like that. Um, and so just having that communal storytelling also added into the narrative of D&D is another thing that I like to do. And then is there any sort of like output feature that for the the players because I imagine like they don't have access to your data. So they don't have they don't have access to the entire corpus of the world obviously. But um in terms of running the game I have a separate section in inside of my notion um account I guess. Uh, that's sort of like where I run, where I track my playing of D&D or my running of D&D. And I gave each of the players their own essentially page. Uh, and they're then able to go in and keep their own notes. Like oh. the player who's the note keeper, he goes in and writes the session notes that he keeps in the database. And that actually allowed for me to pull a really fun thing early on in this campaign where um, I don't know if you've heard of the, um, oh, what's now I'm forgetting what it's called. The uh, um, false hydra. Do you have you heard of the false hydra? No. It's a creation from a blogger online. Um, I'll provide the link to the team so they can be in the show notes. It's a super fun concept that that's very reminiscent of some of the villains and bad guys we see in like Doctor Who or other fantasies, where it starts messing with your memory. Um, when this creature is around, if you can hear its song, you blank out and lose track of time, and you and oh. uh, it starts messing with your memory. And, and then if it kills someone you forget that person ever existed. You you start coming across these rough edges in your memory where it's like, how did this happen? And your brain tries to make things work. Uh, I won't give away too much because if, if, if players are listening, I don't want to ruin it for DMs, but it's a great fun thing. And what I did with, because I had access to his notes was I created a copy of his notes. And then I went through and modified it for the moment of the reveal of what was going on. And I revealed to the characters that they had had another part, player, another character in the party that they had not known about for any session oh. up until this moment. Oh my god! And when they vanquished this monster, the memories came rushing back of this character who was gone. No and they, way. They were, yeah, and they were forced to reckon with this and reconcile the fact that this character who the players had never had an association with, but suddenly learned had been with them on this entire journey. And I had put that into his notes so that uh, when I made the reveal, I said, like, now go check your notes for the, this, this new section. And no. All, mm -hmm. That is such a cool... So this was a character that you just made up. There was never... Yeah, like, no. I, I knew I was going to do a False Hydra pretty early on because I just thought it was such a cool idea. And the yeah. False Hydra is meant to be a much bigger boss. So I made much... Bo like, they were, I think, third or fourth level when they faced it. So I made it like a super old version and it has ties to the larger story arc that I was putting together but it was like session five when I did this to the, the characters and one person had never played D&D &D before so this was a complete mind warp for them yeah. to, to wrap their mind around of this is what D&D &D can be I mean that's just like I'm just thinking as a player like how that had that would be hard hard to to deal with like the thought right. of like like, but I want to grieve this person that never existed. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And they actually, the group just at the end of last year got an airship and they decided to name the ship after this character, which I oh. thought was also a, a really amazing narrative that the characters, the players did, where they brought yeah. it back to this character who we had, like, they could easily forget about this character and move on with the game. Right. But the characters have kept it close and, and, and involved, which is great. And it goes back to what I mentioned earlier on that truth and, and fact is. Uh, a big core part of this campaign and memory and, and recognition of that sort of stuff. So I, I wanted to do that early on in the game to sort of hammer home that this is going to be a theme that I'm looking to explore with this campaign. Yeah. And so, I mean, I guess that's another good reason why you need good notes. If mm -hmm. you're gonna... um, so talk a little bit mo like more about the session notes and 
I always hear people talk about session notes, but like as the dungeon master, how much do you actually keep track of? And like, what is, is that just like stream of consciousness or what are you actually uh, tracking there? So again, a feature of Notion is that you can have temp templates. So I have a template that is my, where I start every session note document. And what it does is it, the first thing I, I always do is like, okay, here are the, the bullet points of what I think the characters are going to do this session. Sometimes I'm wildly off, okay. but this is sort of the path I'm laying out. And if they want to go off of it, I will roll and we will, we'll, we'll play this game. Um, but I start with the bullet points, figure out what are, like, they're going to meet so-and-so, they're going to get a quest here, they're going to start their journey. Uh, and then I flesh out further from that, okay, here's the NPC they're going to meet, here's, what I, here are the, here's the information that they have, um, a rough description of what they look like. I, I don't, I tend to write an intro that's sort of like a brief recap of what happened last session, um, but I, I don't stick to it too tightly. And, and we usually are chatting when we get going. So it's kind of an awkward, okay, everyone, I'm going to, I'm going to monologue for a little while. Right. And so I don't, I don't do that too often or much. It's usually a paragraph. Um, and then it's just me making notes of what I want to go. If they're going to a new town, I have to flesh out the town. What are the names of the buildings? What are the names of the taverns? Who are the NPCs? Uh, not, not the, again, not the entirety of the town, but the top level of what I expect. And then I keep a list of NPC names that I draw from or anything like that when I need to make something off of the cuff. Um, but generally it's, again, where I think the path's going to go. And I'm probably 60%. And if the session goes differently and we're going to instead do what I planned next session, then I'll just copy stuff over to the next session notes. If it's, uh, not going to be relevant if it's stuff that needs to be you know added to my if it's a new character i need to add to the npc table then i'll go in and add that if it's a city i've defined then i'll add it to the the larger information so i'll keep whatever information i need from that session note and then import it into the larger in built world database and then i'll start it all over again for the next session oh my god um i'm such like a, a like a a notes and like I love organization mm -hmm. and so like this is actually getting me really excited about <laughs> yeah because I'm just like I just want to take notes I just want to organize things I just want a database that I can search it just seems like just a fun creative exercise to just make stuff up it really is and uh, that's one of the reasons I love world building and like the one I'm playing D &D in is the one that I have by far the most on but I've got two or three other worlds that I've got concepts for that I haven't really started to flesh out uh, or build on. So like Ilsania, which is the world that I've been playing in, is really focused on, it is its own bubble. Um, it's its own bubble cosmologically because of necessity for the narrative and, and what's going on in the world. But there's also a very strong magical reason for the world to be built this way is that there's actually an everlasting afterlife Um in a more real world than in most D and D campaigns. So like there's what I call the infinite court. So when someone dies, they go to this vast wasteland of a world called the infinite court. They don't need to eat. They don't need to drink. They just exist. And so does everyone else who has ever existed. <sighs> and so, and then there's communication between the living world and the infinite court via this church group organization called the vast collective. And they're, sort of like the Catholic church crossed with Ma Bell at the top of its uh, monopoly. Like they're, they're for the most part, a beneficial good organization, but they have so much power. They wield so much power. They could easily turn evil and then the world's in real trouble. And so there's this like ascending spell essentially between the, the living world and people in the infinite court. And uh, so you can have communication back and forth, which is where the knowledge comes from. Like no knowledge is lost. How does that change an existing world where you're no longer like, oh, let's find an uncovered tome. Instead, it's like, let's find the right person in the infinite court or let's, let's ask the right question of these people. Um, and I forget what led me down this, this description of my world, but there's a lot of notes that come along with this idea because I need to keep track of who's alive, who's dead, who knows what, all that sort of stuff. Have the players ever tried to contact their missing party member through the infinite court? So that that also plays into this world. Um, it's not, it's, I say everyone who's ever died, and it's actually not. Uh, 
there is a group of people in the living world who don't go to the infinite court, uh, of, uh, largely based off of the ancestry and race. Uh, and the missing uh, party member was a tabaxi, and tabaxis are one of the races who don't go to the infinite court. Oh. So I did that per- partly purposefully uh, for the ease on me as a narrative of not having to flesh out every story again. Yeah. Um, but also because it hammers home again this idea that not everyone who's in the party gets to be there. Okay, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. So the um, this this tool notion, which yep. was not designed to be uh, for dungeon masters, but you've made it work. Is there a, a, a way that you can keep track of like s- stats, like monster stats, or have you have you? Uh, yeah, what do you absolutely. Do with that I mean, stuff? if it's a if well, if it's a if it's a creature in one of the monster books, then I, what I actually do is either I save a link to D&D Beyond or wherever I'm going to reference it from, okay. or I make a note to myself if it's on this page. Um, if it's another creature, like it's a fan brew, homebrew one or one that I'm modifying, mm-hmm. then I'll copy and paste stuff in and just make a notes of here's the hit points. Um, I have a very rudimentary combat tracker that I build in there, um, which is, again, a simplified table. It brings in the characters. I put in initiatives. For my monsters, I put in initiatives, hit points, and armor class. Um, but it's very st- rudimentary. It's purely for my reference, and um, it, it works. But the answer is yes, but it's not like a robust tool. Okay. Yeah, as long as you – it's just for your tracking and, and ease yeah. of, of reference. But if monsters were a big thing you wanted to do, again, you can make a template that has all of the base fields you want to fill out as a page, save it as a template, and then you can just easily create a new template and fill it in with each new monster that you want to track in your database. This is super cool. Yeah. So it seems like it's very modular that you can extremely just modular make, and flexible. Make it work. Um I have not yet run across something that I've wanted to do for the purposes of tracking my world that it's not able to do. It's been able to do every single thing I've wanted. Um, I can save images. I can. I, I actually, my group records our sessions, not for publication, but again, for my need for be able to reference things, I can go back and listen to the old sessions. Oh, cool. And I, I store all of the audio files in the, it, along with the session notes, things like that. So it's all up there. Okay. So do you think maybe one day you would publish any of this content? This world sounds pretty cool. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm sure as as most DMs who do world building, I've got an idea for a story to tell um, that could be a, a novel or whatever. If Wizards ever wants to do a supplementary novel, I'd be more than happy to, to publish her supplementary book. I'd be more than happy to put it out. Um, but I, I don't have any plans for it right now. It's it's definitely just meant for my use right now. Well, we know that you're capable of writing a novel in a month <laughs> because you well, did it. The question is if it's a good novel. <laughs> I, I wrote 50,000 words in a month. Yeah, but you leave it to the editors. There's more work to it than that. Well, I know, uh, I know, happen to know the editor for uh, Dragon Plus. So if you're ever interested <laughs> in like a short story or something, you might I'll be able to facilitate an introduction. The short story is tough because like I said, I, I only gave you sort of the, the very, very high level about setting up yeah. the world. And to understand the world, you have to under, you have to understand a fair bit of the cosmology. Or cosmo- yeah, cosmology. Yeah, uh, that would be... That's a challenge for, I imagine, a lot of dungeon masters. Yeah. Just hone in on one section and still have enough of the backstory to understand what's happening in the world. Right. Yeah. Um, this is very exciting, and uh, it's it sounds very inspiring and cool. Yeah. So uh, I hopefully there's some dungeon masters out there that are going to be able to, or even players, I guess. There's no reason why a player couldn't also keep track of no like i said my players love having access to it for their character information and and i as a player i have a section that's like okay here are all the different games i play in here's my character here's my the backstory here's you know my my game notes i have that all in there just not part of the the world building section so it's a it's a i I think it's a super useful tool in DD and out of DD. so i highly recommend it Awesome. Okay, and again, that is it's called Notion. Notion. You go to notion.so is their website, and I think it's Notion HQ on Twitter. Um, but it's it's a really cool tool. It's got a free user tier that should be enough for most people. Okay. Um, only if you need access, like I said, as a company, or you want to upload large files. Essentially, is where the the limits hit for a free user. I think. 
All right. That sounds awesome. Um, thank you for taking the time to talk to me. I happen to know how busy you are because <laughs> we work together. Yep. Um, but if people want to follow you or learn more about you, is can they can they do that? And would you? Yes, them absolutely. All right. uh, I have uh, two Twitter, Twitter handles, one for Magic and D&D and then one for everything else. So Trick MTG uh, for Magic the Gathering because that's what I was... Pre- Originally hired to Wizards to work on and do stuff for. So Trick MTG is my Twitter handle for gaming for Magic D and D. Um, Trick Jarrett, uh, two R's, two T's in the last name, is my everything else: tech, politics, sports, lots of soccer, uh, things like that. Uh, I have TrickJarrett.com, though. I, again, I don't write too much on there these days. Um, but yeah, that's those are the main places you can find me. That sounds awesome. All right, well, follow Trick because he's awesome and. Uh, that's cool. Anyway, thank you so much for being here again, and uh, we will we'll we'll talk soon. I know. Thank we will. you. I'm sure we'll talk. <laughs> we we'll probably have a meeting later probably. on. Probably. <laughs> I'm probably late for it right now. <laughs> Thanks, Trick. Thank you.